I thought I would do something very interesting that I have found myself to be using a lot is um, how quickly and easily I can set my automatic replies in um, Outlook because that's something that I do when I'm going on vacation or you know maybe I'm out of office for some things and I just want to let people know I'm not available and and reach out to the resources right so every time I do this by going to Outlook uh, whether it's web or your client doesn't matter but you have to find where it is and then like you have to go and set that so given that I have access to Power Automate um, I was thinking gosh how do I do this um, that's something that I can I can relate to the task I do every day, which is kind of like I use iPhone shortcuts a lot, so iOS shortcuts. If you haven't used it, I'll quickly show a demo as well. And and I automate many of the things in my iPhone. So I thought, oh, I can actually use shortcuts to set my message. So I get, got into the journey, and and finally it worked. Um, I also blogged about that uh, on how to use Chiri, uh, Siri shortcuts and Power Automate to schedule your oof. So um, I want to thought I'll go through that today and um, you know have some fun because many people are working uh, from home and some maybe oof and some maybe you know want to take sick uh, leave. So that's totally um, you know uh, fine. But sometimes you just want to like tell your phone to do the things and you should just do it right. That's why technology um, is here for us to help us. So what I did was I built a flow that can do exactly this set out of office message. So I'm going to show you what it looks like um, to do it. And here's my um, out of office message. So clearly there's nothing here right now. Um, and I'm going to go to my iPhone. And I'm going to open my shortcuts app. So that's how you can get to the shortcut app. There is an app here that you can click. Um, and that, so you can see I already have a lot of shortcuts. Like if you have Outlook app, you can say what's my next meeting, and it'll tell you the next meeting. You can even set um, city shortcuts with apps. So you can connect to your, you know, your favorite to-do app or uh, the to-do is or even um, task. And then there's also, um, you can uh, use WhatsApp. I can even check into my local saloon for my haircut. So that's really cool, right? Um, so I have set everything up. So whenever I leave, I can just say, uh, city check in for haircut and do its job. So um, where is our shortcut that we're gonna demo today? Here it is, I'm on vacation, right? So I can have many options. I can tell city to say I'm on vacation and then it will basically lead you out. I'm not gonna do that now because it, it won't record the uh, city audio in this call. You can also place this in your home screen uh, and then uh, launch from there, or you can come to the shortcut and click on it, and that's going to run and it's going to say until what day. So I'm going to say March 15th, right? And then I'm going to click OK, and then that's pretty much it. It's done. If you're using Siri, it'll actually tell you that um, uh, you know it's all set. But since this was I was launching from here. It didn't actually do that. Now, what it did was it went and um, started a flow behind the scenes. And now if I actually switch and come to automatic replies, you can see here, there you go from 3.5, which is today's date, and 3.15 that we selected, uh, my automatic reply is here. So um, what happened was basically here's my flow. So this flow is, is using the HTTP trigger. So when a HTTP request is received, it's going to do certain things. And it also has a payload that has end date. So based on end date, um, so based on the parameter I, 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 I send here, which even though you saw I selected a date, um, I'm still getting a string here. And then I do some you know, date manipulations in the flow and then use the action to set up the automatic replies in Outlook. So what am I doing in date manipulation? The first thing is I'm getting the time in UTC, just making sure that I go to a standard time and then convert that to my time zone. So I'm getting my current time, and then I'm also getting the Pacific Standard Time based on that UTC time, just to be uh, you know, uh, safe in this space. So then I format the string using short date pattern. Um, that apparently is what the Outlook connector likes to the start time, date time, and uh, end time, date time. 
Um, and then I set my source time zone as UTC and destination as uh, uh, PST here. So if, if it's in your region, you can set your region time zone. And the other thing I also do is I get the string that I pass, and I will show you very soon how I actually pass that string, um, which is a date. And I know that it's going to be in the date format, and I convert that time zone uh, using that string date time, uh, date time string to Pacific Standard Time. I'm just going to say source time is PST here as well. But the output is I'm going to get a date. I don't have to work on strings, which is the, the, the thing that I really want to. And then I actually now go and um, you know set my status as scheduled, external audience, like all the things that I, I want to do with setting up a hoop message. The key uh, parameters are the start date, the end date, um, and there's also this message here. I don't know why it didn't come up here. Maybe it's a refresh issue, um, but basically it will also type in the message there, so you will get. Um, you know, you can you can have a friendly message for your oof. And the things that I'm doing here is basically getting, you know, to display it as March 6th or March uh, 7th. You can even just put the date here until whatever date you, you sent using the shortcut. And that's pretty much it. It's only like a few steps here. The key thing here to be in the know is how do I work with this HTTP request? So, um, I know David will link this in the chat and in the uh, screenshot uh, blog post that he would do immediately after this call. But if you go to my blog post, there is also a link to a, another blog post um, that describes around how to work with the HTTP request trigger. It's very powerful. So if you spend a little bit of time understanding what it does and how it works and how to actually construct the parameters that you send, which is basically like, you know, I want to send one, two, three parameters here, and then they're all strings or numbers. It will actually generate the schema for you in your flow and then add it as the payload that you can send. So once you cross that stage, then you have your flow built, you're using the parameters that you are constructing here, and then setting the out of office message. So um, what happens in my shortcut? So let's get into that. So here's my shortcut. Um, if you're not familiar with shortcuts, I also linked my blog post, the Apple's documentation. There are so many actions and uh, steps that you can basically add by you know clicking this, and then you get several options. You have scripting, you have media, location, documents. You can even have app suggestions that Siri works with here. So you can directly use that short Siri suggestion, suggested shortcut in your shortcut. But the first thing I have here is that I'm asking uh, Siri to speak. So when I say I'm on vacation, Siri responds to me as awesome, um, until what day, right? So that's really nice. So you get some conversation going on with, your, with Siri. Um, so that it's just not like a robot, but it's just something that a conversation in nature. Um, and you can even like say, wait until finish, you can set the rate, you can even choose your um, voice, whether it's going to be like all the um, available voices. And then you got another uh, step that is basically part of the scripting. It's, like, it's going to ask you until what date. And then here it is, input type. So it has the option to say text, number, URL, date. So in this case, I'm doing date. And then you can even set a default date if you, if you want to start with. And then what I'm doing is I am formatting that provided date input to uh, a short date and short time format. So I know I will get it in this format. So if I go back here and show the run, so you can see I'm getting in, in, in this format. So that's what I'm doing here in this shortcut, uh, which is I'm using a, an action from the calendar app and converting that to short date time format pro with the input that is coming from its previous action. And then um, I generate uh, a URL action step that basically now copies and, and, and puts the, the, the URL that you get here in your flow, which is here. So that's the link that you need to do it. 
and for folks looking at this to uh, understand the, the real uh, issue here that you should be aware of is uh, this is, you know, anybody can call this URL. So for me, after this call, I will basically like delete this, uh, create a copy or, you know, create a new trigger and then change the URL, right? Because it's not, uh, it's security by obscurity. So that's something you should be aware of. It's really hard, but if somebody gets access to it, they can, you know, uh, keep calling this flow. And then what I do is there is a network action where it says get contents of the URL and then do uh, what you want to do with it. You can um, post, you can do all the operations. So here I have get post put. So all I want here is post. And then you can even specify headers if you have. And then you can say request body and add the, the parameters that you want to send. And you can choose whether it's JSON, it's a form, or it's a file. In this case, we want JSON. And then I put the name as end date, and I'm getting the uh, date parameter from this action output. So it's pretty similar to how you're building a flow, right? But it's very much aligned to how Apple is working with shortcuts. So you might need to know how to do these steps. Um, but if you are following me right now, it's very similar to how you would build this in a flow, right? except that you need to know which actions to use in which in sorry I, I just thought my screen was here it's basically like building like a flow right and here is the get contents of url where i can specify the method that is post i can also specify any header i have and the request body in the form of json so it's very powerful and it's very similar to how you build a flow as long as you know what steps and which category they are, right? So instead of products, which you see in flow, you have the categories here like scripting, especially if you want to like have inputs from the user or work with some device level controls, you go into scripting. If you want some music and Apple music stuff or Spotify, you go into media and, and even images, right? So that's the thing that you need to know. But once you cross that, that's it. You use the network action to post um, the, to call the URL with the appropriate method and body. And then finally, Siri will speak back to you, done, enjoy your time off. So that's the shortcut I have built. It took only like 10 minutes for me to build this, given that I know a lot of iOS shortcuts. Uh, but once you do that, it's, it's very powerful. You can do a lot of things. Now, your imagination is, is, is like the key, right? You can have so many flows that does many things just talking to your phone. You're not limited to, you know, I have to have Siri support or I have to like have a flow button in my widget. Nope, if you're cool to build these shortcuts, you can now have several flows with HTTP trigger um, that then calls other flows, right? Child flows to do certain actions. So yeah, I thought this is something cool and I was able to do it. So, so I'll show a demo and share the love of Power Automate and uh, Siri shortcuts. And that's it from me, Vesa. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Jax. Really, really interesting. And it's it's nice to see kind of related technologies. And this is anyway in the Microsoft 365 area and really, really interesting automation because you could do then whatever you want in the flow or in the Power Automate side um, uh, with that setup. So really, really cool. Mm -hmm.